Hi, I'm today I'm talking with Carolyn Schuyler, the executive director of Wild Rock, which is an outdoor playscape. And we're going to talk about the importance of being outside with your preschooler. Uh, and Carolyn, I'll let you go ahead and, and just start to any of the things you think are sort of the most important reasons for making sure you get outdoor time. Sure. Well, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to connect with you, Pam. And um, as a beloved preschool teacher with lots of experience yourself and getting kids out. Um, so when we launched Wild Rock as a nonprofit, our primary goal was to be a space that would be really inviting and welcoming for families to come and connect with nature. And the reason I was passionate about that is because of my background as a mental health therapist. Uh, I, I know the research well and have seen the results anecdotally of how when families make regular time to connect with nature, it really helps kids to learn how to self-regulate, to develop the skills that they need to be able to self-soothe. Because nature, as you probably have noticed just in your own lifetime, um, it has a real calming effect. In just a short amount of time outside, the stress hormone production goes down and we start to feel less um, scattered in our thinking. It's easier to focus. Um, and it's easier just to be able to take deep breaths and to be creative. And being creative helps us to get new perspectives on problems. And it, that's true for adults, but it's also true for little children, that they have a chance to reset their nervous systems and to feel more creative and engaged. So nature is a very powerful powerful ally in helping us deal with the chronic stress that frankly is a reality for most families. Even before COVID, that was true. We tend to lead very fast paced lives with a lot of demands. We're often multitasking throughout the day. I think that's particularly true for families with small children that you're really trying to watch the kids and engage them. And at the same time, be taking care of other demands. So when you get into nature, it's just like this space where you don't have to be multitasking, where you can just be together, where you can let the sensory engagement of the natural world kind of hold you in this very um, relaxing, calming space. Um, and I just think sometimes we forget that this resource is right outside our door. Yeah, and I, I think it's so easy nowadays to think to, to overschedule. I mean, obviously some of that has pulled back in this current time, but you know, with the, the dance classes and these classes and those classes, instead of just spending some time outside. Yeah, I guess maybe because it's not so packaged as a enrichment experience that you pay for, that we can <laughs> overlook it. Yeah. So like if you can in your mind's eye say, hey, I'm gonna give you know an hour of the best enrichment possible that helps my child's development and brain development and social skill development. I mean, really, it is as powerful as any class that you could attend or more to just take your kid outside and have child-led play. There's an abundance of research on that. The American uh, Pediatric Association came out with a memo in 2018 that said, basically, you cannot overstate the benefits of free play for what it does for children's child development. And, you know, there's not actually, you know, because there's no one selling free play, we don't hear mm -hmm. a lot about it in the media. It doesn't show up on lists on Amazon of what we might get our kids for Christmas. You know, so it can get really overlooked. Um, and it takes a little prep to get outside. You've got to find the shoes and you got to get the kids corralled. And so sometimes we just don't do it. Um, so I, I'm really glad, Pam, that you're just kind of reminding people that the payoff of doing that extra effort to get out is that you're going to have a calmer evening. You're going to have a better bedtime. You're gonna have a more regulated kid that's more receptive to the other kinds of things you wanna do during the day. So whatever effort it takes to get out, you're gonna be deeply rewarded for it later. Yeah, and you know, I even think that's true. Um, of course, you know, at our school, we went out no matter what the weather. And I think sometimes you were mentioning gathering things up and getting people ready to go. But boy, if you invest in, uh, what's, what's the saying, the Swedish saying there's there no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Yeah. You invest in having the rain pants or little out. Now they have those cute little easy to get outfits that, you know, yeah. Rain, a day outside in the rain, talk about it's so exciting. I mean, cause, I mean it really so is. Much to I mean, see puddles, and do. jumping in puddles. And if you mm -hmm. have the right clothing yourself, I and mean, that's the other thing, like I, 
you know, yes. it snowed last weekend. I couldn't find my boots and I was out there in my sneakers and I was thinking, I am ruining this for my child because I have to leave in half an hour. My feet are freezing. <laughs> so like, it's not only getting the right gear for the kids, it's also investing in it for yourself. Cause when you do, you know, you really can spend two or three hours in the snow or out in the rain and kids, they're, they're hardier than we give them credit for. They can manage that. They're wired for that. It's really okay to have kids in, in extreme weather conditions uh, with the right clothing. Yeah. And if it's a place that you're used to going to uh, or playing in, whether it's a mm -hmm. backyard or a park or something, you know, hiking trail, when you see it in the rain, it's a whole different place. That's right so or in the so snow, true. it's a whole different place. That's so true. That's and I love exciting. that when you return to a place, children can start to have the observations of how things change. And that every time they go, they can have a different yeah. sensory experience because that's what's so great about nature as a play space. It's always novel. It's always engaging. There's always something new to find. And you can't replicate that so well in an indoor space. Yeah, really true. Mm -hmm. um, there was something else I was thinking of and now it's kind of, oh, the just, just the creativity factor. So um, I know that I, kids have so many questions when you go outside. Yeah. And the neat thing I think about nowadays, and, and this can go either way. I know some people would, you know, we're outside, we're just outside and we're looking and we're going to think about it. And that's fine. Bring in a journal, maybe writing something down. Um, for some people who really need to know the fact that we have cell phones. I mean, I, I will admit that on occasion I have been somewhere with a group of kids and I, you know, normally I like us to wait or figure it out or think, you know, I let them think about it, but sometimes it's nice to be able to go, that is this. <laughs> look at you can look it up, which is a neat thing that that we can do now that we didn't used to be able do to do. You use the the iNaturalist app to look things up. Do I, I have a couple different ones, but that's a good one. Yeah, I mean it's amazing how you can get a free app called iNaturalist, and it allows you to just take a picture of something that you see, and it'll identify it for you. And to be honest, the the one of the ones I love the most, which is actually my husband's phone, but is we when we do the stars. So now wow. you can go out at night and, and I, as a kid, some, I always love to do that, but I sometimes struggled with finding everything, you know, in the sky and, and it's even harder now because of a lot of the light pollution. But, uh, so that's a wonder, there's wonderful apps for that, where you can look at the night sky and see where the, the constellations and they kind of show wow. you on your. That I so am glad you mentioned the night sky because there's something so magical about you know sometimes surprising a child and taking them out to see the moon if it's a special full moon. I mean, some of my happiest memories as a parent is waking my child up to do something special like that just for it's like hey there's yeah. something really amazing happening in the night sky tonight and I want to take you out to see it. Those are the kinds of things that really are really beautiful memories for children. And, you know, I know this is, goes into not some of it young and some of it a little bit older children, but um, I'm sure a lot of areas have the same thing. I know that we're in the Charlottesville area and there is a, uh, the astronomy club. They do fabulous things for families. So anybody can go out. They have this every other month thing where you can look in all these telescopes and see things. Um, and they hold us at different places, but they also have programs for children where at the end of that program, you actually get a telescope and they, they, they do a lot of things to encourage young wow. people to learn about the night sky. So that's, Ooh, that's uh, a really good one to know about. I'm so glad you shared that. Yeah. There's my... also some, there's so many great resources in this area. Like there's a great birding club for kids and Ivy Creek has the, uh, the naturalist club for kids and Yep. So I just think there's a lot of resources for parents that, you know, want to get more engaged in nature and would like to be part of a community to do that. Yeah. And then you don't have to know everything either. Right. <laughs> I, I feel like one of the really nice things too to remember is that, especially in the preschool age, it's not so much about teaching them about, you know, that's a nice thing when they're curious to give them information and help them kind of use their imagination right. about what might be true. But for this age, just the sensory experience of being outside and encouraging kids to touch things mm -hmm. and to, to move them in their hands and to try to smell them. Because there's just, we know so much now that sensory engagement in the preschool years is really important for brain development. And it sort of sets the foundation for learning throughout childhood. 
It does. And I think the outdoors for a lot of, a lot of preschools are inquiry based, right? We don't, mm-hmm. you kind of put things out there or you take them outside and we, we, we kind of ask questions more than telling them things, right? Or, right. or and listen to what they're saying. And, oh, what do you, uh, there are wonderful incidents of this um, that I know of with, with a outdoor group leader who had the children out and they found and I, I, I wish I could remember now exactly what kind of tree it was, but it kind of looked like a caterpillar. Oh. It was from a tree. It was one of those little, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, like a little fuzzy. Yeah. And, and the one child was convinced it was a caterpillar. And rather than saying, well, that's not a caterpillar. No. <laughs> they Tell looked me. around. They looked at things. They brought it back to the school. They put it in their insect tank. They watched it. You know, then they came. They figured they she let the children figure out what it was. Wow, how great. I mean, what did, when you think about it, what a rich discussion, because it kind of gets kids to think about is something alive or not. And they remember that. And, and uh, it's hard to do lots of times to not just go, oh, no, that's. <laughs> but to get them to come and figure it out themselves. Adult knowledge. And, yeah. you know, and it's even so true. Like, I, you know, obviously, I'm a big proponent of free play. I built this playscape so kids could do it. And I find myself a lot trying to direct my child's play just because I have already we kind of envision some kind of outcome that I think would be good for her. And, and I somehow think that it, you know, is to her benefit to have my wisdom coming in. <laughs> and I really have to pull back because when I do, when I'm you know, regulated enough myself to pull back, I really find out how much richer her ideas really were. It'll and surprise you, right? The things yeah, and how with. much she really was directing on a path that was highly meaningful to her. And that I learned so much about her and her inner world. So it's always a little humbling for me that if you, if you really can be that warm, curious presence for your children, rather than feeling like you're supposed to be their guide and teacher, some really beautiful things emerge. And now I think it would be nice to talk a little bit about, um, you know, at Wild Rock, and we'll, so that's the example we know. So that's a beautiful outdoor playscape. There's a lot of things there that are uh, set up so the kids can go out and play mm-hmm. in a safe environment and their parents can even just be up. I mean, I, I know they often will usually end up with them playing because you do lots of great things. They can catch crayfish. They can, <laughs> they can be all yeah. over the place. There's the play kitchen. There's, um, but maybe I think some of the examples out there, and, and to be honest, I, I think a lot of your things have spread to some of the preschools in the area, like the Wildlife Rescue Center for the kids. I mean, we certainly yeah. do that. Um, so tell us about a few of the things that that are really engaging for the kids that you have outside, besides just being, we love just being outside in the woods. Right. But. Yeah, we had really hoped when we designed Wild Rock that people would replicate it. We tried to come up with things that people could look at and say, hey, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's fun to see that that happens. Like we we, we know that children, they're, they're, they have beautiful nurturing instincts and they're really curious about animals. Animal connection is one of the first ways that children really find themselves in relation with nature. So we do have a wildlife rescue station and what it is is um, a set of puppets that are all native species to our area. So there's a deer and an owl and there's a skunk and a fox and a bear. And then we have a binder that talks about the kinds of things that animals might need help with from a veterinarian or a wildlife rehabilitator. And so kids that can read can look in there and get information and kids that are just curious about doing vet play or doctor play, there's the the kit there with the stethoscope and the thermometer and bandages that are just ripped up sheets. And this is a great way for kids to engage in that caretaking play and also to play out their own experiences going to doctors. Um, So it's a really rich environment in a lot of ways. And if they wanna learn about the animals, they can. And that would be easily replicated at home. I mean, you could easily make a doctor's kit by just ripping up some old rags or an old towel that into strips that they could use as bandages and, and just getting some little tubes that you could pretend are thermometers and making a bed out of a box and just using some stuffies. So anyone could do that and you take it outside to make it even more fun. I know it's one of the most popular, you know, we rotate a lot of things during the year. It's one of the most popular things at our school. Yeah. Um, and we bring in acorns 
and for the squirrels and things, you know. <laughs> they can get, you can gather food for them yeah, and, yeah. Up with, and, and getting get the animals water. They love taking a basket and making the little bedding, like you said, and the bandages are so popular. That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So such easy things to do. And one of the things we sometimes do with the kids too is then have them make a habitat for the animals to make a den and just having lots of sticks and pine needles. And um, if you don't have that in your yard, you can bring it in from other places so that they can um, get that experience of building a den and imagining how animals need to burrow, maybe by getting an old pipe and letting the animal go into the pipe. Um, so I, I just think there's so many creative ways to engage yeah. kids with stuffed animals outside. And we also have animal costumes, which are you know pretty inexpensive. You can get really inexpensive animal masks on Amazon. And we have those at Wild Rock and we find that when kids put them on, it really opens up their imagination to pretend that they're an animal in the space and they navigate the space really differently when they have a fox mask on or when they have butterfly wings on. And it's really fun to see how that changes their perspective and, and how they interact with the space. Well, and I know when we looked at things and we had to be very, excuse me, <clears throat> careful spending wise, we, we actually made a, um, different colored faux fur vests, really simple ones. Didn't, yes. didn't have to have any real knowledge in sewing or anything. And, and the kids love those. And then they can kind of choose also what animal they are, right? I mean, oh, I love that. Yeah, vests are great because you don't have to worry about the head and, <laughs> um, and they're so they're easy to wash so we have vests where we just have tails on them too you can just nice you know, you can even take a pin with a tail um so it's just amazing how a simple costume can just add so much more to their their play life I, I just think of them as prompts that kind of fuel their imagination um and I think that we can turn any grass area into a place of deep imagination with just a few prompts. Like one of the things we do when we go to urban areas, because we do about half our work is actually going into underused green spaces in urban areas to give kids play experiences. We have these giant metal bowls. They're, I think they're from in, you know, like industrial kitchens. They're just huge. <laughs> and they're big enough that a kid can sit in it or they can turn it into a turtle shell or they can stand on it. They can turn it into you know, the biggest stew bowl that ever existed. And it's just amazing how that one simple bowl, and it's so sturdy, like it's, we've, it's literally been around hundreds of kids at this point, can, can really prompt so many different kinds of play. So I love the, like, the open-ended materials that are often not even really billed as toys. They're yeah. just great objects that have just, they're, they're solid, that the kids can't destruct them. And they can be used in so many ways that it's just the perfect thing to have outside. It is those simple things. Sticks are great things to build with, to oh, draw yeah. with, to all kinds of imagination. You know, we joke about, you okay. mentioned the simple toys. And I was, you know, I always talk about Lincoln logs are great, but you can only build with them. So they're set to be built with in a certain way. And, yeah. and so that's fun, but it's a very specific thing. Whereas a lot of architectural blocks and different things you can do all kinds of things with. And so I really do try to think towards and lean towards those open-ended toys even and, mm -hmm. and things. And in outdoors, man, you got everything no. <laughs> to build That's with really rocks and leaves. Yeah, and sometimes it's just it's so easy like just to model something for a kid. Like we, we have these river rocks where we just take Sharpies and we put ears on them <laughs> and two eyes and a nose and whiskers. So suddenly the river rock looks like a rabbit. And then once you've invited that, suddenly any rock can be whatever they want it to be. Some children don't need that prompting, but you know, it's, as everybody knows, there's been such a shift in childhood in the last 20 yep. years. And there are some kids coming to preschools that really don't have that depth of symbolic play that you would hope. And that it's helpful to do a little bit of prompting and, and modeling of how to take objects and use them in novel ways for play. What I think is so beautiful is when they learn from each other, they, they watch what other kids are doing um, and, and then kind of incorporate those ideas into their own play. That's true. Now, I think we covered a lot there. Is there, is there anything else that you would like to mention as far as preschoolers and outdoor play? Because I think we're pretty good. Yeah, I guess I just want to just say that we, we now know that spending time outdoors is just, you know, in the last year, there's been a lot of research on this really buffers kids against mental health issues. Kids that have spent a lot of time in their childhood around green space are 55% less likely 
to develop a mental health issue in adulthood. So I think one of the things for us to remember is that when you're going outside, not only are you getting that stress relief that I was talking about earlier, but you're banking for lifelong health. There's research now that what happens in childhood has ramifications throughout life. And if kids learn young that they're, they belong in nature and that it's a comfortable, welcoming space, they're much more likely to seek it out when they're older. And, and that can be a vital resource for self-care throughout life. And they're also much more likely to care for the natural world. And as everybody knows, you know, we're dealing with a lot of environmental challenges and to have kids that care about the natural world and are curious about it, it's gonna be so important. Um, so spending that time outside is really a gift to your child in so many ways. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And also, if even for adults who haven't spent a lot of time outside, doing that now with your child makes a huge difference for you. It really does. The it's kids really out there. for the entire the family's yeah. well-being. Well, well I'm so you. grateful for this time, Pam, and thank you for being such a champion for Nature Connection for Families. Well, it's the right thing to do, isn't it? It really <laughs> anyway. is. It's one of the simple things that we can all do that makes such a difference. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. It was great to see you, Pam. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. You too. Bye-bye.